Hey guys, it's Joe Tenney, and if you're like a lot of people, you want something that looks cool and drives great, but doesn't cost a lot of money. One of the problems is, whenever you find a car that looks cool and, and drives great, but doesn't cost a lot of money, it can be a nightmare to maintain. In steps one of the nicest cars for the money you're ever going to find, the first generation Mercedes CLK. Available as both a coupe and a convertible, and with three different engine choices from CLK 320, CLK 430, and CLK 55. First generation was built from 1998 to 2002. We're going to take a look under the hood at this 59,000 mile 2002 430 convertible. Now with three engine choices, power goes from not super powerful to almighty powerful. This is in between. This is the 4.3 liter V8 engine. It comes with 275 horsepower, 295 pound-feet of torque. So this is a zero to 60 in six second car. So it's actually very powerful while still averaging about 20 miles per gallon. I've been averaging about 23 miles per gallon here in the big island of Hawaii, but with lots of open roads, that's more highway miles where you live. CLK 320 came out in 1998. It was available as a coupe, 215 horsepower, 225 pound-feet of torque with a six-cylinder engine that was new for 1998. 99, that car came out as a convertible, in steps in the CLK 430 as a coupe. In 2000, you could get the CLK 430 in a convertible as well. 2001, CLK 55 coupe comes out. 2002, CLK 555 uh, convertible comes out. CLK 55 is a little bit different than the other CLKs in that its mechanics are hand built by AMG. It has 346 horsepower to get, uh, together with almost 380 pound feet of torque. Zero to 60 on that car is five seconds, so blazingly fast. Let's take a look around. Now, the CLK has much in common style-wise with the contemporary E-Class from the late 90s and early 2000s. However, this is built on the C-Series sedan platform, 105.9 inch wheelbase. Taking a look around, well, they're really a nice looking car. I really like the CLK 430s because they come with the AMG Sport wheels. They're offset, so they're bigger in the back than they are in the front. 225, 45, 17 tires in the front. 245, 40, 17 tires in the rear. Really spacious. This is a 2002 vehicle that's completely original. And as you can see, even the interior is in like brand new condition. Looks great with that burled walnut trim, which is real wood. If you look in the back, this is a power retractable convertible top and it has an integrated tonneau. And so this is a, like a speedster that they had in the old days. You'll see old Porsche speedsters and they have the same kind of profile on the rear deck lid. This is standard on the CLK across the product lineup. The headrests on this, by the way, are actually roll bars, and you can raise and lower these manually. If the car ever flips, they pop up automatically to be a life-saving device. In the trunk, now this is a small car, and it's a convertible, so the trunk shouldn't be all that big, and it's actually pretty nice. It's 9.9 .9 cubic feet, which isn't giant by any stretch of the imagination, but if you want to throw in a set of golf clubs or make a quick trip to Costco, you're actually in pretty good shape with this one. Let's jump inside and take a peek. So a lot of great creature comforts. One thing is that the rear speakers are in the front door. So you have, count them, one, two, three speakers in each door. So six speakers in the front with one really nice Bose speaker built into the back rear seat. Rear seat's not all that big, but with the seats in a normal position up front, you can do pretty well with four people, assuming that the people in back aren't all too big. You do have front air airbags and front side airbags as well. The airbags are built into the doors. One thing you don't have is a tilt steering column. You have a telescopic steering column. The steering column goes in and out, but it does not go up and down. But you have a wide variety of up and down features integrated into the seat. In fact, on both sides, you have multifunction power seats. Now, this is a really nice car. It's in fabulous condition inside and out. It has pretty much every single option that you could get in 2002. But more important, it's not a very expensive car. It looks great. You know, it's not the kind of car where you're going to pull up on a date and the girl's going to look at you and go, really? 
It's actually a nice car for not a lot of money. 275 horsepower and 0 to 60 in 6 seconds, well that's great. It has powerful brakes, in fact it has amazing brakes with brake assist, which was an amazing feature back in the day. Brake assist means it doesn't wait till you push the brake pedal all the way down, it goes by the speed of how you fast you push the brakes. So in an emergency situation, if you go to slam on the brakes, it automatically gives full brake force immediately. It has electronic stability programs so that you don't get out of control if you're driving on unruly roads, or you can just turn that off because in a car like this, sometimes you want to get a little bit unruly. And then it's just a one button operation for the convertible top. Built in factory alarm system, heated seats, navigation, great stereo system. Again, it's not a lot of money. One neat thing, though, about the modern world that we live in is Carfax. Now, I am not a big believer in Carfax, except for one thing. I love when I see service records on Carfax. On an older car like this, you're going to have a pretty good idea of how well it was serviced when you pull the Carfax up. And remember, it tells you the dealership who serviced the car, or at least the independent service facility, so you can give them a call and get an update on what's been done and what hasn't been done. But most important, whenever you buy a used Mercedes or a used anything at all, always get a buyer's inspection at the dealer that sells that car new. I can't say that enough. It's the most valuable advice I could ever give you on a used car. You do not want to buy somebody else's problem, especially an older Mercedes. But if you get a nice Mercedes, a nice one that's been well serviced with wonderful low miles for not very much money, honestly, it might be the very smartest car you ever bought in your whole life. You're going to be able to drive this car for years and years, and it's going to cost you nothing between the price you bought it for and the price you sold it for. Really a cool thing. I highly encourage you to take a drive in a couple and see what they're all about. Please don't hesitate to reach out to me, Joe Tunney. If you have any questions, you can reach me anytime at joelovesawaii at gmail.com.